Welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to have a look at something very strange and unusual that the James Webb Space Telescope has recently found and these are double rogue planets. Now before we have a look at what I actually found I want to go over what a rogue planet is and what a double planet is and how we might have found them actually. So first we probably are familiar with what a planet is. One of the definitions really for a planet is that it orbits a star but that's actually not always true. As we know in the solar system, the planets go around the sun or the star, our star, but you can actually get planets that are floating around in space on their own. They're not necessarily just free floating, they're still moving with regards to gravitational interactions with other stars and that, but they're not gravitationally bound to a star. So they're not orbiting around a star, they're moving through the galaxy on their own without being attached to any star. So we know there are these rogue or free floating planets. And interestingly, they're not exactly rare. It's not this like this is a theoretical thing. We have found quite a lot of them already. So these are single planets. Now, looking at double planets, we know that binary stars or double stars, stars in orbits around each other, are fairly common, actually. And so are triple stars. You can have stars in or four stars, you can have up to six stars. So you can have lots and lots of stars in these dynamic systems. They're quite common, especially binary systems. They're very common. But planets, are they common? Well, actually, I want to give a bit of a hint to some that might be in our solar system. But in order for you to have a double or binary planet, the mass ratio between the two needs to be pretty close to one. So they need to be around about the same sort of size. If they're not, then the second object is just going to be a satellite or a moon. So you need to have both objects fairly close to being the same sort of mass. And when they are, what you're going to find is that they're going to orbit a common centre of mass that's not inside the planet. Or, for example, the Earth here and the Moon. So the Earth and the Moon, they have a mass ratio of about 0 0.0123. That's actually very high. It's not close to one. It's not, the ratio is not one to one. But actually, the moon is very large in comparison to the Earth, which is unusual. If you have a look at the ratios of other moons and planets in the solar system, the Earth moon is actually quite close to being a double or binary system. It's not really because the moon isn't a planet. It never would be a planet. But even the biggest moons we have are orbiting the biggest planets. So actually, those ratios are, are quite low. So for a double planet, then, the center of mass, which is where the, the, the center of mass of the system of the two, should be outside both objects. So if you've got a very large object and a very small object or low mass object, then that center of mass is going to be inside probably the planet. And then it will look like the satellite or the moon is orbiting around the outside. But as you get closer to the same sort of mass, that center of mass gets in between the two and those planets are then going to orbit that instead of orbiting, well, they do kind of orbit each other, but they'll orbit this common center of mass. So it also depends on the gravitational interaction of the star. So for example, the closer to the star you are, then the star is going to dominate the gravitational effect acting on the planets, essentially. So the tides from the star will be quite significant. But if it's further away, that won't be the case. So if you've got a planet quite close to the star, it's unlikely you're going to get double planets there because it will look, it'll make them unstable essentially. So for them to orbit their own common centre of mass, the star's gravity is going to destabilise them. So you would more likely find them further out in the system. So towards the outer part of our solar system. So if you look at places like the Kuiper Belt, where Pluto is basically in our solar system, you do find binary systems of smaller objects like asteroids, um, dwarf planets. So Pluto and its moon are pretty close to being a binary system as well. And the further away you are from the star, then it's easier for that to occur, basically, because the tidal environment is less extreme. So real systems in our solar system that come close to being a double planet is Pluto and Charon, which is its moon, and the Earth-Moon system as well. They're not quite one-to-one -one ratios, but they are close enough that the common centre of mass is in between the two, and it would cause a, not a wobble, but the larger of the two would still take an orbit 
wouldn't just stay there as the smaller one orbited around. So those are close to being double planets, although the Pluto system wouldn't be a planet, it would be a double dwarf planet. So we could call it a double dwarf planet. So what did Webb actually find? So the James Webb telescope, what it did was it looked at the Orion Nebula and it looked in near infrared. Now what that allows you to do is you can look a little bit deeper into it really because you're looking through the gas and the dust a little bit, you can see a bit further in where that would normally be obscured in the optical part of the wave of the emission. So actually you can see a little bit more, you can see some different things. And in that box there, you can see a really nice image that James Webb actually took and you've got some really nice detailed images of the actual nebula itself, stars and things like that. So the interesting thing about the Orion Nebula is that it is a stellar nursery. So in that nebula, that gas and dust, there are new stars forming. And actually down in the background the image there, you've got a blue star. The blue stars are quite young, uh, they're quite large as well. So they've formed very recently. But also when you zoom in really close to this nebula, you see these protoplanetary disks or these disks around young stars where planets are starting to form. So James Webb and actually Hubble as well has seen these disks around the young stars where we're starting to see the formation of planetary systems which is quite exciting but what, what actually did it find with regards to the double planets well it found that in the Orion Nebula it was about over 500 rogue planets so about 500 or so more planets that are free floating that are not attached to a star and it knew this because it directly imaged them so it could actually image where they are you could look for the stars nearby no stars nearby these are free floating objects, but it also found about 40 that were in pairs. And in these boxes here, you can see, zoomed in a little bit more, these are essentially planets, binary planets that are on quite wide orbits. And you can quite clearly see you've got two um, sources of light there. These are the planets. And these are actually called jumbos because these are Jupiter mass binary objects. So these are quite large planets. And they are in a binary system. And I believe that they are on quite a wide orbit. So they're not close binary systems, but they're on a wide orbit nonetheless. And they are orbiting some common center of mass. So they're quite large, like Jupiter size, and hence the name Jumbos. So how did they actually get there? Well, it's unlikely that they actually formed from their own cloud. So in the, in the Orion Nebula, you get localized gravitational collapse which then form stars. Let's say you had a smaller cloud, maybe that could form to a planetary size object. But that's actually thought to be not likely really. So it's not likely that these formed just from a very small collapse of a cloud in the same way that a star would form. So how did they get there? Well, there's another mechanism which can create a rogue planet. And if you've got a planetary system here, so again, a bit like the solar system, you've got multiple planets there. What happens is, they can pass by each other. Well, they do pass by each other. And when they do so, they exert a gravitational force on one another. And as they pass each other close, that gravitational force can be fairly strong. And you're probably aware that we do use some planets for gravitational assists to give us some additional velocity if you want to get further out in the solar system. Well, a planet can do that. A smaller planet that got too close to a larger one could actually gain some energy from that one and it can be scattered out. What could happen is if they do have a close encounter, you can change the orbit of one of those planets and it can become more elliptical and be sent further out. It can be scattered more inclined, so it's orbiting out the plane of the other planets, but it can still kind of remain part of the system. And this happens when the planets are still settling in. So in the formation process, they're not necessarily stable. They can wander around. They might still be in a gas disk. And that means that they can migrate in that disk. And if they do, they can get further apart and closer together. And this is when those gravitational scattering events occur. And also going back to the Orion Nebula, we've seen young planetary systems forming. So it could be that actually what's happened here is during the formation process of these planetary systems that this has happened, that it's sent some of these out into the wider nebula without a star. And with extreme encounters, planet can actually get ejected completely out of the system and then that's what gives rise to this rogue planet you have an encounter with another planet 
and one gets thrown out. The other planet will have its orbit changed as well, depending on the size of the planet. If it's a really big planet, then it will be a smaller one that's going to have a more significant change in its orbit. So what happens then is you're left with a rogue planet and a free floating planet. So those are relatively well understood how you could probably get those because we have found quite a lot of them. So we know it's a mechanism that does happen. But how on earth do you get the double ones? Because we know you can get a single one during a, a scattering event. But how do you then get a double one? And it's really not known how they've got there. They've only recently been found and there isn't a proper mechanism known to form them at the moment could they actually be double planets to start with that have then been thrown out or have they formed in a different way so it'd be interesting to see how these might have actually formed but at the moment there's no idea how they actually got there so thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos